Merry Christmas, and welcome to episode 11 of the Slow Pace Knitting Space. My name is Michelle Matthews, and I'm a designer and knitter living in Northern Alberta, Canada. Uh, I just want to say thank you, and welcome back to everybody who's been watching these videos. I know that this one is late. I meant to record it two weeks ago, um, but it ended up working out really well for me to go Christmas shopping. And at the end of November and into December, if, if you have a chance to go Christmas shopping, you take it because you don't know when it's going to work again. Um, and also the closer to Christmas, of course, the busier and busier it gets. So I did my Christmas shopping. I'm mostly done. Uh, and that feels really good. Um, and then I meant to do it last weekend. And instead, my nieces came over and to play with my kids. And I was just like, I, I don't want to tell six kids to be really quiet and stay downstairs when they could play with the toys in the rooms and stuff. So I was like, okay, guess it's not today. Um, but I don't mind too much. Like I feel a little bad about not being consistent, but at the same time, the whole point of slow pace knitting space is that I'm not trying to force things where they don't fit. Uh, I want to do my knitting and designing and all this alongside life and not too too forced don't don't squeeze it in too much and I don't want to take over too much of my life so that being said I want to be successful enough that you know people might know who I am or people might knit my patterns <laughs> so it's a tricky balance mm -hmm. I'm drinking a holiday special in my latte cup, this is my latte cup because it holds coffee and milk. And I'm drinking an eggnog latte, which I've never tried before. And so I just made it home and I really, really like it. I don't always like eggnog, but I found out I really love hot eggnog. So if you don't know if you like eggnog that much, just get a little bit and try it hot. Um... Before I get into the knits, I just want to share a little bit about what I'm wearing. And I'm not really wearing knits, but I am wearing these earrings that were made by my friend Nikki Shafrick of Clay by Nikki. And she used to be local to me, but she lives in Pender Island, BC right now. So Canadian small business mom. So that's nice. Also, I happen to be wearing the alpaca socks that I won in the Great Northwest Yarn Crawl. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, I won these as a door prize for buying yarn at the right place at the right time. And they are made from alpaca, which I've never really tried before. And um, they're definitely warm and they don't irritate my legs or anything. They're not super scratchy even though they're not super soft, so they're kind of nice. Huh. Yeah, and with that, I'd like to work right into my first whip that I want to show it is a pair of socks that I've been working on for a long time. These are the Impossibly Possible Socks by Lisa K. Ross. And since my last video, I worked on them a lot, but in the last few weeks, I have hardly worked on them. So I don't remember where I was last time but I had started, I had re basically restarted them from the first repeat. And let me get this other one out. There. So I've got two almost at the same spot. And what I've been doing is I have been knitting one repeat on one sock, cutting the yarn, and knitting the same repeat in the same shade on the gradient on the other sock. And then work to the next shade, cut it, do it here. Um, and that works really well because there's a little more of each shade than I actually need for two repeats. But I did run into some issues, um, for instance, on the gusset. As you can see, I'm adding all these extra stitches here. Um, and so that takes up more of the color yarn. 
And so I had to figure out how far can I knit on this sock that I can knit that far on the same sock before the color changes. And so I actually got out my paper and did all this math and I would show you if I had it. And so that worked out really well. Um, you can just see right at the tip here, I did have to change color before I was done the pattern repeat. And also on this one, just barely, I think only on one of the socks, I had to switch colors before the repeat was done. And then up here is just fine. Um, but there's like these socks are basically look like they're ready for the cuff, but there's still this much yarn left. There is still two color transitions. So two more full repeats and that that's going to start running up to my upper calf rather than mid calf. So I need to have another gusset on the leg. I need to add stitches around or it's just not going to fit all the way up. And I would like it to. So something my husband gave me advice for was to try and make the gusset on the calf a little bit more discreet because on the knee sock, he said it really stuck out and didn't look as nice. It drew attention away from the pattern. And so this sock, I have been increasing. I again brought out the pen and paper and calculator on my phone and worked out how many stitches do I need to add to by what point or whatever to be able to match the repeat up eventually so that it would you wouldn't even notice. And so, um, yeah, this is what I have so far. And you can see there that it's much more discreet. Uh, in fact, like even I think right here or so, I have an extra stitch. And then as we work up here, it's just hiding. Like you can tell it's different, but when I'm wearing them across the room or something, it's not going to stand out as something is wrong. So I think that's good, but... Yeah. Oh, and now the problem I'm running into is I'm adding so many stitches around that I just don't have enough of each color to do the full repeat anymore. And so I worked out how much will show and it's like by the end, I'll only have half of the repeat in the next color. So I'm trying to figure out if I just want to do that, use up the rest of this ball of yarn and end it where it ends, or do I want to top up each color from my other ball of yarn that matches. And so it will have the full repeat each time of each color. So that's a decision for the new year because I have other things on my plate right now. And that's okay, these things are a joy to knit as well. So when it comes to the other things I've been knitting, it really kind of comes to what is your spoiler philosophy? Um, I know for a fact that my husband watches my videos. So I can't put his stuff, his Christmas knitting on the video because it'll, he'll just see it and, and that won't be any fun. Uh, we were pretty big on we hate spoilers here. So, or at least I am. When it comes, like in movies, when a, a preview is showing and I get to the point where I'm like, yeah, okay, I wanna watch this. I start going like this and so that I don't get any more from the movie. I don't want to know anything except maybe an idea of the plot before I go in because I don't want spoilers. <laughs> oh well. Um, and then, so that's absolutely, don't put his stuff on before Christmas. But next is I have been, oh, so I have been knitting him something. I keep it in this bag and I usually put this bag somewhere where he's not like, oh, what's this? I'll just check what's in it to see where it goes. I just keep it out of the way and discreet-ish. I don't think it's possible for this bag to be discreet, but I keep it out of the way and I don't think he has spoiled it for himself or if he has, he hasn't told me. So that's good. Um, but what about my grandma? I have been knitting stuff for my grandma and I don't know if she watches my videos. 
And I don't want to ask her because what if I say, hey, grandma, do you watch my videos? And she'll go, oh, no. But then maybe she'll think, maybe I should. And she might start watching them and then get spoiled with what I'm making for her. So I can't really, I don't really know if I want to show that either just yet. But I can tell you about the yarn I've been using. So I've been making an accessory for my grandma to wear and it's a color work accessory and her favorite color is my favorite color which is like a dark emerald green and so this yarn is Midnight Cravings Lush Fingering in Evening Gown and this is the I don't know if this is the main color the contrast color because there's pretty much equal amounts of both colors in here but this is the eye popping grabs you looks gorgeous color in the accessory that I'm making for her and I love it so much I have finished her gift so all this is left to make something for me and I'm so excited but I have no idea what it will be or when it will be but it's there and I oh, I have paired it with Knit Pick Stroll Tweed in fingering fingering weight and this colorway is Oyster Heather. Sorry, it's hard to figure out where the camera is sometimes. Um, there, but I mirror it to my computer so I can see what it looks like for you. So this color contrasts really well with this one. This was not the first contrast color I picked because I wanted, I wanted both of the colors to pop a little bit. So my first one was this one which is Sea Turtle Fiber Arts something 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 in the colorway Calm. And I took, when you want to tell, is it going to have enough contrast to look good? You can take a picture in black and white and that will show you uh, if it contrasts well or not, which I did that. And it looked like it would contrast fine. And as I started knitting it up, these blue bits really became a problem. They do not contrast well at all. And the, the color work in this project, if it had huge spaces of this color, that wouldn't have been a problem, but they were tight and small enough that it really was messing it up. It wouldn't have looked very good. So I did these ones instead, much better contrast. But there was something about it that wasn't looking that great and I realized it was because I'm using this Tweety yarn. And so it has these little bits in it which give it an added texture look. Um, it's very cozy, but in color work, it just made it look like it had been worn already. And I, I didn't like that. So I started uh, pulling a bunch ahead of where I, what I needed and picking all these bits out and having a little pile of fluff beside me. Um, it's not hard. They're woven in very gently. So just like, Yeah, and that worked so much better. Just picking them off and then getting my really sharp little scissors and snipping them off, it looked so much better. I wasn't supposed to say that. Um, Okay, so those are done. And that's Christmas knitting for my husband, Christmas knitting for my grandma. And that's mainly what I've been working on. Um... And that would make it a really short video, but I did cast something on last night. Uh, around Christmas time, it's super common to have some sort of mystery knit-alongs, advent knit-alongs, and so on. And I did even participate in one, sort of. Uh, I did it the year after it came out uh, by myself because that person didn't have another one going that year. And I have had a hard time finding sock advent knit-alongs going on right now. It seems like a lot of the mystery knit-along patterns for this Christmas time are exclusive to this super expensive Christmas advent yarn box where you get a new little mini skein every every morning or every other morning and it comes with this pattern for that one and this pattern for that one and I didn't get any of them so because they're really expensive. <laughs> um, so I uh, decided, well, I still want to do this. I still want to have fun. So I pulled out all my like, yarn scraps or things I didn't have a plan for that were already wound up. 
and picked 12 colors. And so I'm actually going to make my own advent socks um, to a pattern that I've knit before, which is a quick and fun knit called Dropping Madness by um, Maria Ekblad. And this is the one I knit before. This was a sock madness pattern a couple years ago, and which meant I had to knit it to pattern. And so the pattern actually had, it had an afterthought heel, it had this gusset, and then it had an afterthought heel and flap. And so it was way, way, way too big for my foot. And I ended up taking out half the heel afterwards. And this time I'm just gonna make a simple afterthought heel or maybe a fish lips kiss heel. And it will be quick and easy and it will fit. So the one I'm going to make will have a main color, which I'm doing in Knit Pick Stroll Tweed again in the colorway Prussian Heather. And I'm gonna be picking out the Tweedy bits again. Yeah, this way, ha. Okay, and I am just start on the toe. It's cast on toe up and I'm using 2.5 two five millimeter needles and I have not quite finished the toe but I've just got it big enough to clip on this little thing to show me which way is front because I kept going okay was I did this one I'm on the next row or I'm on the second half because you work it when you do magic loop like this you work it in half so you work this side that side this side that side and I couldn't tell which was the beginning of the new round but now I will, because this will help. So I'm working on that. I have 12 colors picked out and I will have each of these pink stripes here will be one of the 12 colors working its way up. So the ones I'm making will not be nearly so big. And my goal is to do a little bit each day so that I can finish it up right around Christmas or Boxing Day or so, which is awfully ambitious. I don't, the little logical part inside of me is like, this isn't going to finish in time, but I'm going to try. Um, that's my baby. I will be right back. My daughter Phoebe she just got up from her nap and she always wants to cuddle with me afterwards so we'll give it a go um, something I'm excited about the the dropping madness socks that I'm working on is that I can enter them in sock ninjas anonymous for December which normally you're not allowed to knit a pattern for their challenge that you've knit before but this December the challenge theme is repeats so I can do it again I'm, I'm kind of excited for that. It's okay. Mm. Yeah. Something else that happened recently since my last video that was a lot of fun was a thing on Instagram called Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted. And it's a hashtag and you you put you share the picture and you say some wishes and you explore the hashtag and kind of you see if anyone has wishes that you could grant. Um, a lot of them are like a pattern from my Ravelry wish list, or a lot of people are scrap yarn or minis for their scrappy socks or scrappy blanket or whatever they're making. Um, and that one's easy because it's such a small, cheap thing to send in the mail. Um, and then you might have like a hero item, which might be a specific yarn or a project bag or something. And so I got a couple... Um, patterns from my wish list, which was really exciting. And um, a couple people asked for my address, but I haven't gotten anything. So I don't know if maybe my message got lost and they didn't send me something or if it's just taking a while. I don't know. And I don't really care. It's just kind of a fun thing. But someone from New Brunswick sent me a project bag that came in yesterday. And this is it. It is this massive thing and it is so fun. It's hot pink on the inside and it has a handle. It had a little thing on the zipper pull, but it broke off, which is too bad. So I'll have to put something else on there. 
This is an enormous. I was thinking like maybe a small sock project bag. I was not thinking somebody would send me something I could put a sweater in or a shawl or uh, a 12 yarn sock advent project. What is it? Okay. Yeah. See Yeah, you see us. Yeah. Okay, you guys sit nicely or else you can go see Daddy. You know, actually, I think that's all I have for today. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to start... Uh, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to film the first part of a holiday episode. And my plan is for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day to post out a holiday video where I share what I've been gift knitting. So all these things that I've been talking about but not talking about and showing but not showing... I will do that. So thank you so much for watching this super short episode. Please come again and watch my holiday episode coming in a couple weeks. I might even be able to squeeze another video in before then and show off the, my progress on the Advent socks, my progress on my plan for a gift knit for my daughter, which she does not watch my videos, so I don't mind sharing. So please come back and check those out. They're going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who watches and comments and subscribes. Everybody who likes my stuff on Instagram. Um, thank you so much. It's a lot of fun to, to interact with real people out there and not just... Goodbye! Not just send it out into the internet and become anonymous and disappear. So thank you so much for everybody who plays a part in this. And yeah, thank you and bye for now. <laughs>